today I'm going to be doing a product review of something that motorhomers and caravanners, and in fact other people that drive other kinds of vehicles, might find interesting. It is a Halo View Sophon S7 reversing camera, and this thing is wireless, so the installation of it should be fairly straightforward. I've yet to take it out of the box, but over here it says that this thing is AI, artificial intelligence. Let's see how that works out. I have a bit of a spec sheet. I'm just going to read through some of the facts and figures. The system will continuously recognize both vehicles and pedestrians that enter the alarm zone. So that's going to be where you point the camera. The system should actively help the driver reduce distraction by warning the driver audibly and visually. The installation distance between the transmitter on the camera itself and on the screen at the front of the dash should be under 10 meters. Now with the largest UK motorhome that I'm aware of being somewhere around nine meters, I think we all should be quite safe with that. It may be a bit of a different situation if you're driving a um, towing car and caravan in a long outfit. Within the 10 meter distance, interference free reception is guaranteed. If you're using the system off van, and you might decide to set this up as a security camera for some other purpose. There is a guaranteed line of sight reception of up to 300 meters. Now that's a significant amount of distance for this kind of thing. The camera itself comes with a magnetic base for instant mounting and removing. Bear in mind that this is a wireless system and you're gonna to have to take it off occasionally and charge up the battery. The screen on the dash is seven inches. That's about 18 centimeters. And it also supports micro SD cards up to a capacity of 256 gigabytes. And I'm guessing that's for recording events. The monitor has a multiple split screen view and can accept inputs from up to four cameras. That's rather interesting. For those of you that need marker lines when reversing, adjustable rear assist marker lines help you to back up properly. In addition to being a camera, the system also has a microphone so when you're reversing and perhaps listening for directions from somebody that's standing outside the van, any spoken word will be broadcast through right into the cab and it should have your attention. We have previously been using a set of uh, PMR handled radios to do that job, but having something like that integrated will be mighty handy. If you think this product will be useful to you, what I'm going to do now is put a link in the description below, which will be an affiliate link. So if you choose to buy one using that link, we may receive a couple of pennies, but you'll be pointing to exactly the correct product. I must also say apologies to the people from Halo View. It's taken us so long to get to this. First of all, we had the COVID and then we also swapped motorhomes. I wasn't going to install the system on the old motorhome just to take it off and do it all again. Sorry about the delay. Let's dive in to the unboxing. It's a bit more awkward than I thought with only one hand. It's going to have to be a change of cameras now. Let's go ahead and open up the box. You might have it upside down there. Yes, I do. User manual. We might have to look at that later. And another user manual, which we might have to look at later. Ooh, it looks quite fancy. It's a rather nice looking touch screen. For a bit of scale, here's the standard Ducato key fob. That's nice and big. Let's see how this thing mounts up to the dash. Looks like there's a slot on the back for the bracket to go into. Speaker and SMA antenna mounting point. That will be for the wireless. So it said on the spec sheet there's somewhere for an SD card. I'm, I'm guessing over there is a slot. I might have to read the manual to confirm that and have a scratch around in my box of camera gear to see if we got a spare SD card. Sticky magnetic pad number one and another sticky magnetic pad of a different shape. Power brick for charging the system. It might be wireless, but it's still going to need electricity at some point. Thank goodness for that. 12 volts. 
We can run this off grid, dry wipes, piece of metal, more 3M tape. The camera itself, 12 volt charging socket and a nice rubber plug. Yeah, that's quite tight to stop the water ingress. All of that's going to be magnetic. The other SMA aerial port, more braggity bits and pieces. Some screws, a windscreen mounted gooseneck bracket. Now I just might use that for today uh, because we don't know where this thing is going to end up permanently. There's a, a lot we still have to do in the van in terms of what other equipment is going to be stuck onto the dashboard or windscreen. We'll probably have to rejig things around once or twice to get the perfect arrangement before we stick everything down permanently. Bag of screws and nuts. There's the two antennas. A cigarette lighter style charging cable. And I guess this is an adapter if you want to charge two things at the same time. And that appears to be some kind of a signal connection. Plastic bit and a metal bit that look like mounting brackets. Right, let's get stuck in. Before I'm going to do anything else, I'm just going to put this thing on charge, get some electricity into it, because we're going to be hitting the road shortly, and I want to give this thing at least some battery power. There's some further specifications from the manual. I see that the camera has got a waterproof rating of IP67, overcharge protection and over discharge protection as well. That's good for the battery. And we also have 12 LED night vision lights. This camera will operate at daytime and nighttime. There's some more technical weights, you know, if you want to pause the video here and have a read of those, please feel free. So it's sometimes good to read the manual. Great big exclamation mark. Please pair the camera with the monitor by using the external 12 volt power supply and provided pairing cable before installing the system on your RV. We have a handy EcoFlow over here, which I'm going to use to provide the 12 volts out for this experiment. I'm not going to be using the mains adapter. Motorhome's on the driveway. I just had to move it forwards in order to get a ladder up to the back where the camera's going to go. And I've disconnected the EHU. Oh, this thing has got a, a switch on it. So we can turn off this, this 12 volt cable here. It's quite handy. It's on. It does actually say on it. Yeah, pairing cable. 12 volt out into the pairing cable which is just a splitter. So we've got two more 12 volts out over here. This cable over here with all the pins in it, lots and lots of pins, is going to be for connecting the monitor. So let's do that. It is keyed, but the keyway is quite small. There we go. Connected, and then we'll pop the camera in as well. Currently coming up as no signal and re reverse marks. No signal. Maybe you've got to turn it on. The S button over here. Short press for channel selection. Camera four. The antennas need to be vertical, pointing right up to the sky in both cases. It's easily adjustable. Just make sure it's pointing all the way up. What I'm going to do next is going to stick this 3M magnetic mounting plate, which is extremely strong, onto the back of the motorhome. On the back end of Roxy, we installed this sticky on one side, magnetic on the other patch for the reversing camera. The glue is very strong and so is the magnet. Once the magnetic pad is installed, it's very easy to install and remove a charged or discharged reversing camera. There you go. On. Oh, let's try and get that central on. There we go. It's resting up against this high level brake light as well for just a little bit of extra security. And then if you want to take it off to charge, just pull it. And there she is, the halo view is in place. I did it off camera. It was a little bit um, reading the manual and trying to figure out the best temporary position. I just used the gooseneck that suckers onto the screen like that, clamps onto the metal thing at the back, which is magnetic, thankfully. So we'll take the halo view with us on our first drive and see how it works.
with a wireless reversing camera with a design like this one, you have to remember to take it off ever so often for recharging. So I've just been doing that as I'm going to take the camera for a bit of a test drive now. So our first trip out in Roxy, I didn't really get some good footage of what was happening with the reversing camera as we were going along. There was a, a lot going on all at once. So I'm going to put the camera on the back of our Corsa and go and explain some of the features as I take a drive along and how it looks in reverse and all that good stuff. As the unit is magnetic, it sticks very easily to a car. No need for a special sticky pad. This is only plastic, it's going to be fine. And the car is very short. I'm sure we're going to be within the recommended distance of 10 meters here, probably only two. It's worthwhile pointing out that the gooseneck windscreen mounting option that comes with this reversing camera has got quite a strong magnet on the end. So I'm just going to bring it close to the metal bracket at the back and it sticks like anything. No problem at all um, with the strength of that bond, especially not for what we're going to do today. We found the noise from the external microphone internal speaker to be a little distracting, especially on a long motorway trip. So I'm now going to disable that and that's done in the picture menu. There, that car just went past and it was silent. Fantastic. Yes. So I see a, a yellow square for people and a green square for vehicles. I don't normally reverse into a bay in a supermarket car park. I find it silly, you want to put stuff in the boot. So what I'm going to do, just to test out the camera, let's try it out over here. Looks like it's going to make it remarkably easy. Yep, I'm centering the bay now. There we go, we've arrived. A little bit of shopping done. I'm going to head off back to Crafty Campervanas HQ. Let's try and drive straight out these this parking bay, you can see and that the lines actually do line up. I just wasn't doing it right earlier. Don't mess that up altogether. Probably going to get more chance to see some people if I head off this way. And here it is, now crossing the railway line. I've just realized we've missed watching the Flying Scotsman go under this very bridge on Sunday. Whoops. Just let the ambulance through.
back down the A38. Over the River Brew. This is rumoured to be the bridge. Well, it's not the original one, but there has been a bridge here, and this is why High Bridge. That's just for the camera. I prefer to park with the rear end of the car facing outwards as there are some red lights at the back and that helps people navigate around the car instead of trying to go through it. If you found this review useful and you fancy buying one of these things, I'm going to be putting an affiliate link down in the description below if you want to buy one of these things for yourself.